Hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me again for another live Q&A session or community chat, whichever you prefer. If you're new here, welcome. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us for a little bit today. If um, don't know who I am, <laughs> that would probably help, huh? I'm Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover. And for those of you veterans as well that have started to join and participate in the chats, which I appreciate because this is all about community, I think. Um, it started as, you know, me sharing what I've learned thus far in my own journey, and then it became more of a place where we all kind of come together and share information. And, and I love it. I think it's needed. Anywho, um, through my channel here on YouTube, I share with you tips and tricks and techniques and things that I do every day in my own voiceover business in the hope that it helps you with yours. And um, if you're not new here, well, first of all, I want to say I had to change the colors for it's October. It's October 10th. We're getting close to Halloween, my favorite holiday. So uh, I like the lights. But anywho, if you're not new here, then you know that every week we have a poll. And this week's poll was actually inspired by a comment that I received last week when I asked for, what do you guys want to talk about? Let me know. And that was the first one I saw was, let's talk about audiobooks. So let's talk about audiobooks. So today's poll, of course, was do you narrate audiobooks? I know audiobooks aren't for everyone because they are a marathon. They are not a sprint. And I have to say that I've seen, and we've talked about this many times, but the social media posts that you see kind of flipping through your, your favorite social media platform, where you'll see a video of someone saying, and here I've got the best side hustle for you, make $1,000 per hour in your PJs with your iPhone. That is not how audiobooks work at all. There is equipment that is needed. There is learning needed. And in terms of what kind of equipment do you need, right? How does it all work together? What is a DAW? How do I use this recording software? What, how, you know, training in as far as uh, maybe getting your audio perfect, maybe working on your performances, maybe learning to slow down because we read faster with our eyes than what we should narrate, right? There's a lot of nuances to audiobooks. And not only that, but they take time. They take a lot of time. This is not something that you can jump into one day and just decide, hmm, I think I'll narrate audiobooks today and then, you know, start making money that day or the next. It takes time to establish yourself, build profiles, all the learning and all the training. So they are a little bit of work. And I don't say a little bit lightly. <laughs> they are a, a little, well, I should say they are a lot of work, right? So I wanted to know how many of you actually narrate audiobooks if you want to narrate them, but maybe don't know much about them. If you have questions, please put them in the comments and we'll get to them within our hour here today. Hopefully, usually we get through most of the comments in an hour. Um, let's see what you guys are saying in the polls so far. Uh, we have 43 votes. It's a good amount of votes for this early. It looks like 53% uh, of you, so over a little half of you said that you've, at, you've narrated at least one. Um, and then 44% of you said, I'd like to, but I haven't started. Nobody said, no, they are too much work. So that's good. I like the attitudes already. Positivity. And then 4% of you said, I don't know much about them. So hopefully us talking about this today will maybe answer some questions and maybe fill in some blanks that perhaps you have. So let's talk about it. Let's get over to the comments and see who's here. Let me get rid of this banner. Also, I have to say I fangirled a little bit this morning when I was <laughs> accepting new members into my Facebook group. And I came across Gabrielle Nestico. So I, I don't know if she even takes the time to watch my, my YouTube uh, videos. But uh, if you do, so flattered. I appreciate all that you do and all that you share. I've learned so much from you. And if you don't follow 
Gabrielle. You can find her on, um, I think, just about every platform. Uh, she has a channel here on YouTube, The Gift of Gab. She's got some great videos in there, so go check them out. All right. Had to be said. All right. So, uh, first in, Eric. How you doing, Eric? Eric is an established audiobook narrator. He's got quite a few under his belt now. How many do you have right now, Eric? Are you still here? Uh, Caesar. Caesar, Caesar, Caesar. You know, I was thinking a lot about... <clears throat> Uh, not only the mock audition you turned in last week, but your voice in general and listening to some, let's just say spicy audiobooks this weekend, because I listen to audiobooks of all type because they are a great tool to learn from. But I think you could give Teddy Hamilton a run for his money. Just saying. Caesar says, why, yes, I am currently narrating one at the moment. Awesome. I have, however, had numerous challenges ranging from inclement weather to rampant wildlife. So I'm installing some heavy soundproofing this week. I think that's a good idea, especially where you are. You've got a lot of nature to contend with. Caesar then says, that said, hello, Angela. Hello, Caesar. Hello, everyone. One of my cats bit clean through a fingernail. Ah, so I had to get some shots. Oh, my gosh. It was very unpleasant. Yeah, I'd say. I don't recommend this experience to anyone. No, no, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Kara says, howdy and good morning. Good morning to you, Kara. Dylan is here. Hey, Dylan. Good morning. I've done a half a dozen or so, but after I finish the two in production, I'm looking to transition to shorter form stuff less time, bigger margins, for sure. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of people that I have met anyway through the past few years that have started perhaps with audiobooks, but then stepped back from them or just don't do them all together because they are a lot of time. And when, you, when you're running your own business, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do in running your own business. Lots of hats, especially if you're stubborn <laughs> like myself. And try to control everything. Try to be everywhere all the time. It's hard. So with that said, there's a lot less time for, you know, audiobooks for some people. So they do take a lot of time. It's a commitment. Audiobooks are definitely a commitment. So I totally get that. Tess is here from Dracula. <laughs> I know it's Dracula, right? Am I saying that right? Dracula. But Dracula. I like to call it Dracula. <laughs> JCC AOL says, Angela, will you have a Halloween show? Will you be in costume? You know what? Right before I went live, I looked to see um, the calendar and <laughs> Halloween falls on a Tuesday. So I don't know. I don't know. But it will be Halloween-y. I'm already there light-wise because <laughs> I just love Halloween. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. We shall see. Hot Pink Bear says, I really want to start narrating audiobooks, but I am still learning audacity. And that is okay. It's going to take the time that it takes. Because learning your DAW, your digital audio workstation, people always say, what is a, what is a GAW? What are you talking about? <laughs> a DAW, D-A-W, is your digital audio workstation. That is your recording software. And learning that and understanding what effects you need and what they do, what the effects do and how to edit and record and all of the things that you need to know for not only voiceover in general, but for audiobooks specifically, because there's a lot of particular formatting, a lot of specific requirements that you need to adhere to for audiobook production. So learning your DAW is a good thing. Take the time that you need to learn it. There's a lot of great um, creators on YouTube. I saw another one on TikTok the other day. They're all over the place. People that are willing to help give information about what all these different DAWs do. Reaper, Audacity, Adobe Audition. They're all over the place. So take the time to learn from them. And when all said and done, even if you need one-on-one -on -one help with your DAW, there's a lot of audio engineers that are peppered throughout the community that are willing to help with your particular DAW, helping you to 
uh, you know, doing like a like a booth audit. They will help you make sure that the sound in your booth is is good, is as best it could be, and help you make um, like EQ presets and maybe help you with shortcuts and things like that. So there's a lot of help out there to be had. You just have to find the person you want to work with and reach out. Joe Pay says hi from Pickens. Hi, Joe. How you doing, Joe? Daruk Siren says, good evening, Angela. Good evening to you. Phantom voice. I'm new. I'm new. This is so freaking awesome. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, Laura Tippett's Burrow says, for those that have narrated... What percentage is narrating and what percentage of the time is production editing? I think you're going to find a lot of different answers to that question because everybody's a little bit different in how, in how they narrate and also skill levels vary with production and editing time, the post-production and editing time. I think it's safe to say when you first start out, myself included, it's going to take a long time until you get the hang of it, especially with the editing part. I think um, and I, it also depends on if you do the clicker method while you're recording to mark your mistakes, or if you do the pun punch and roll method, learning one or either of those is going to take some time. And then the narrating itself, you know, with retakes and pauses and sips of water in between, and then the editing going through and the mastering. I mean, I think for me, just to give you some kind of point of reference, Every finished hour of audio, which includes, which is roughly about 9,300 words, but that includes the narrating, the editing, the mastering, everything finished, one hour of finished audio takes about, takes about twice as long to narrate. It's a good rule of thumb, I think, because you'll have retakes and edits and things like that on the fly. And then another maybe three depending again on your skill level, but another maybe even two to five hours per finished hour in the beginning as you're still learning your DAW to edit and master format. So essentially every finished hour as, an, as a new person, as a new narrator could take what, six, seven hours per finished hour I think that's I think that's pretty safe to say in the beginning. But as you continue to do it and you start to improve your lung capacity, start to, you know, um, you get better at sight words and slowing down. And there's not as many retakes. You understand your DAW better, so you know how to edit and master and format faster. You should be able to get it down to maybe like a instead of a one to six ratio, you know, hour. You could get it down to a one to three or a one to two, right? It just comes with time and training and learning, just like with anything else. So I hope that helps answer that question for you. But allow yourself some time. Allow yourself some time to learn in the beginning. Nick says, hello, hello. I am narrating my first audiobook now. Good for you. Congratulations. It's way more work than I thought it would be. And life, of course, throws more challenges at you when you start a side hustle. It does. It's just the nature of things. But I, I would think that this would be some sort of a test or challenge for you to make sure that this is, in fact, what you want to do. Uh, that's what, how I would take it if something gets thrown at you in the middle to see how well you can handle a curveball and overcome it, right? So make sure that you keep a, a positive mindset. If this is something tr you truly want to do, you will overcome it, you will get it done, and you will be happy with it. Chrissy Sells is here. Good morning, Chrissy. How are you, darling? Good morning. Looking fresh-faced and beautiful as usual, Angela. Oh, thank you. I don't know how I'm fresh-faced. I'm on like three hours of sleep, but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> I appreciate that. Phil says, hey, Angela. Hey, guys. Hey, Phil. How you doing? Pat is here. Good morning, Pat. Phil says, people in my area started celebrating Halloween on October 1st. You know, I think they started celebrating. I saw some people already decorating their lawns in September. <laughs> 
if I had a lawn, I would definitely be in that boat. Love Halloween. So much fun. Chrissy says, actually had an audiobook. I did go live last night. Oh, you mean like it's finished and it went live for retail last night? That's the case. Congratulations. Aaron Alling. Good morning, Angela. First time out here. Well, welcome. Welcome, Aaron. Glad to have you. Joe says, did my first book, What Fun and Work, narrating it. It Well, congratulations on your first book. It is a lot of work. That first book is always probably going to take the longest, right? But I'm sure along that journey, you have learned more about yourself, learned more about your DAW, your recording space, your gear. So it should, the second book, I mean, you'll start to get more efficient with your time as you go forward. Caesar says, I beg to disagree. I have narrated in my PJs. <laughs> it's the joy of being an online business owner, right? PJ City. <laughs> Is it Fy Fyra Matrix? How do you choose which book would be profitable? I've done three so far, all royalty share, but not many sales. I think if you're looking for a royalty share book, the first thing you want to look at is if it's an established author, if they have um, some books already out and they have a pretty good following, lots of reviews. Uh, you want to look at their sales rank, all these things you can see on ACX or Amazon. Or even if you use the tool uh, Audiobook Scout, you should be able to see these things. If you're because you want to see that they have uh, an established fan base. If they're a indie author, maybe this is their debut novel and they don't have a fan base established already. You still want to look at their ratings and their reviews, their sales rank of their book. You want to see how well the book is selling to go royalty share, right? Because you want you want the book to be. Um, popular and to sell well in order to make sure that you're going to see a return on your time in sharing in the profits with the with the rights holder or the author. If you're doing royalty share plus, then you'll get a royal uh, the 20% of the royalties plus a upfront, um, typically a smaller per finished hour rate. So you're covered both ways. So you're covered for your time, even if the book doesn't really maybe sell as well as you had hoped. You still get a little bit for your time and then sharing in the royalties going forward. Um, same thing applies. I would make sure that the book is um, has got some reviews and ratings and has a has a decent sales rank. Or maybe an established fan base already. If it's a per finished hour book, sales rank, re uh, reviews, ratings don't really matter much because you're being paid for your time up front. And you're it's sort of like a buyout that way. So... You won't have to worry about royalties or anything. So those, those, I hope that answers your question. Um, also, uh, evergreen books, like evergreen um, titles. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, content, evergreen, like uh, self-help books, maybe some types of romance. Those will pretty much always sell well. <laughs> M.G. Steven says, good morning, Angela and everyone. Good morning, M.G. How are you? Phantom Voice says, I want to, but I guess I have to learn how to read first. <laughs> That's definitely helpful. Being a book nerd, if you're already a book nerd and love to read books, is definitely going to be a plus. It's definitely going to help you to embrace this endeavor because it is a lot of work. But learning how to read probably helps, too. <laughs> Nick Davis says, uh, to Laura Tippettsboro, I am struggling with editing post-production, so I spend about four times the amount of time editing that I do editing and producing. And that's usually where most of the time, I think, lies. Most of that work per chapter or per finished hour is usually with the editing post-production process. Joe says, took eight hours to do my book. What was the um, word count for that book? So we get an idea of your ratio. Uh, Sarah Confortini, Confortini says, I would love to start, but I am unsure on mics and won't break the bank. Mics that won't break the bank if I decide I hate it. Um, 
I could tell you something here, and there's, of course, there's always going to be varying opinions on everything. But as I always say, listen to everybody's opinion. Because even if it's opposing to mine or opposing to somebody else's, it may still resonate and apply to you. So I always say, listen to everybody's opinion. But where I started, I started with a USB mic and then I upgraded to an XLR and then, which was the Rode NT1A. And then I upgraded to my Sennheiser 416 and I've had this mic for gosh, years now. But if you're looking for something that won't break the bank, a lot of USB mics nowadays, the technology is so good that they, they sound really good for USB mics. And if you get a USB mic to start with, just to dip your toes in and see if this is something you enjoy, you won't need an interface, right? It's just really plug and play into your computer. But if you decide you like it, I highly recommend getting an XLR mic, which does require additional equipment and a little bit of extra know-how. And these are a little bit more pricey. However, some USB mics will match the same price point as some XLR mics. So it's really up to you and what, how much you want to invest up front. And you can always find stuff secondhand, too. You can always find mics. There's, again, I've mentioned it a few times. There's a Facebook marketplace on Facebook that does nothing but sell used or gently used uh, audio equipment. So you could always find something secondhand even to see if you like it. And then once you get the bug to upgrade your equipment, I'm telling you, it's addicting. <laughs> Laura says, thank you, Nick. Any others care to share? Uh, Gregory, Gregory's here. Good morning, Gregory. Good morning, Angela. I'm virtually on time. Yes, you are. And Blaze, how are you, darling? Good morning. Phil says, do I narrate audiobooks? Why, yes. <laughs> I've narrated mine, Cross of Destiny by Phil Sun, now available everywhere. Get your copy now on Amazon. Audible. Caesar says, how about that? I do follow Gabrielle Nistico. She's excellent. Excellent. She is. And she is now in our Facebook group. So exciting. Chrissy Sell says, I just finished a 13 hour book, a 13, holy Moses, and took around 50 hours total. Wow. How long of a time frame did they give you to complete it? Like 30 days, 60 days, 45 days? Julia says, hi, I like the, uh, I like the, what is that? At, for, at first glance, I thought it was Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's not, but <laughs> I was like, oh, look at that. Nick says, I spend about four times more time editing and producing than reading. I hope to get more presets to make it easier. And also just it, it, anything that you do. What did I hear this morning? I heard in a podcast this morning that it takes you 34 times to do something until it, uh, before it becomes like muscle memory. So just keep at it. I don't know if there's any validity to that, but that's just what I heard. But that makes sense. The more you do something, the more it becomes uh, natural, right? It just becomes, you become more knowledgeable with it and everything you do multiple times, you just get faster at it, right? And presets, shortcuts. Um, hot keys make things easier. A simple tailor says, I'm narrating an audiobook and turned and turned in the second round of pickups. I sent the client a couple of emails for feedback. Three weeks later, no response. Are they ghosting me or is that normal? You know, I've had, I can't really say if it's normal or if it's ghosting you. I've been in similar situations and had similar things happen. And what had happened is somebody in the family had fallen ill and they had to take care of them. So you never really know what's happening. But I would say if you're in your second round of pickups, then it sounds like your rights holder is not in the habit of ghosting. It sounds like they're pretty hands-on. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't immediately think that they're ghosting. That could be something that had happened. But I would say just keep trying to... Um, and also, I have just randomly, I have emails that even people that I've talked to before have fallen into my my spam or junk folder. I don't know why that happens, but sometimes it does. So it could very well be that perhaps yours are. I mean, there could be a, a number of different reasons. 
But I guess my point is this don't immediately think that they're ghosting you. It could be something that happened. But just keep trying to reach out and hopefully um, this will be resolved for you. Gregory says, Caesar's voice is absolutely delicious. That is a good way to describe it, Gregory. It is. Chrissy Sell says, I agree, Caesar. Teddy Hamilton's new competition. Right? And just that mock audition that he was doing, I could hear it if he gets really low <laughs> and gravelly. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pamela says, good morning. Good morning, Pamela. Good to have you here. Aaron says, got my first rejection on ACX the other day. Great start. And that's just a normal part of the process. But the key there is to not take it personally. Don't shut yourself down because you got one rejection. That doesn't mean that you stink or that you shouldn't be doing this. It just means you weren't the voice they were looking for. That's it. When an author is writing a book, they have voices in their head. They have the voice of the story. They have a voice for the character. All of this stuff is already predetermined in their head. And so when they're trying to find a narrator, they're trying to find someone who can convey that tone, that feel, that sound that is already in their head, or at least the closest thing to it. And if you get a rejection letter, that just means that you weren't that voice. That doesn't mean anything else pretty much other than that, right? But if you have um, any kind of concerns about your audio quality, your reading ability, anything like that, then I would definitely recommend joining Facebook groups where sharing a demo for feedback is allowed. My Facebook group is, if you go to uh, the VO Workshop on Facebook, in my group, I allow you to do that, to share your demos for feedback. So you could do that and just double, triple check that maybe it isn't a sound or performance quality. But most of the time, it's just because you're not the voice they were looking for, right? So don't take it personally. Just keep going. And don't submit one audition and then sit back and wait for a response. Several, a day, auditions all the time, right? Just keep going. Phil says uh, to Caesar, I'm patiently waiting for your book now. Same. I am Paximus. Hey, long time no see, buddy. How are ya? Hey, Angela. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. Great to see you and be here. I am unfortunately still in the process of recording my first audiobook due to limited time I have. You are a busy, busy guy. Busy, busy guy. I haven't seen any new uh, TikToks from you lately. You must be busy. Uh, Rustic Hillbilly is here. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Phantom Voice says, sorry. Java pause. Phantom Voice says, I want to voice cartoons. Is is that weird? No, not at all. I think a, I would have to say a good maybe fifth of the people that I talk to and have talked to for the last few years have had the same aspirations. I never really thought about getting into um video games myself. When I first started, I just audiobooks and that was it. I didn't want to do really, I wasn't really open to anything else until I became open to it, right? But I've done a lot of video games and they're a lot of fun. And funny enough, the, fu the video games that I have um, recorded for, um, the, of course, they're all, you know, indie kind of games and things like that. Nothing super big, but which is fine because I still had a blast doing it. But it was just my voice. It wasn't anything, you know, I wasn't doing like character voices or anything like that. It was just me. And it was a lot of fun. So no, it's not weird. It's not weird at all. Julia says, hi, I'm new and just subscribed to you and I love your videos. Well, thank you, Julia. I appreciate that. And welcome to the voiceover family. Appreciate you being here and for the subscription. And if you're watching this team replay, please subscribe. I appreciate that. It helps. It helps boost my channel to have other people find it and who might need this information. Um, Brittany says, I just switched from a USB mic to XLR. It has definitely been a learning curve. Yeah. Same girl. <laughs> same. <clears throat> Fiber Jazz says, hello, all. Hello, Fiber Jazz. Good morning. Late signing on, had new COVID vaccination Friday evening. Think I'm having a delayed reaction. Oh, no. Not going to do any VO work today, just resting. Good idea. Ugh, audiobooks are not my jam. 
And they're not for everybody because they are so much work, especially if you don't really enjoy or can't really fathom trying to narrate for hours on end or editing, uh, you know, files for hours on end. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think you should just rest today. A simple tailor. Hey, Angela, working on my third audiobook, but normally responsive client hasn't responded to my emails in about three weeks. This is after I turned in the second batch of pickups. Is that normal? Didn't we just... Did, this sounds awfully familiar. Oh, yeah. You asked that question earlier. Um, <clears throat> Eric says, when I finish the ones in my queue, I will have 30 books under your belt. Good job. That's in two and a half years. That's awesome. That's awesome, Eric. Has it been two and a half years already? Oh my gosh, time just flies. Phil, to Laura, <clears throat> I'd say producing editing will be longer than narrating for sure. Uh, Caesar says, also, thank you, Gregory and Chrissy Sells. Mm -hmm. Joy says, well, the Platinum Group is in force today. Love that, you guys. Hello, Angela and everyone from Southfield, Michigan. To my shame, I want to narrate books, but I haven't started. Don't know how to get started. Where can I learn? And I'll get in. I'll get going in between gigs. Girl, you know you're in the right place to learn this stuff. We go over this stuff in our platinum group. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Um, there are a lot of ways to get started. I think most of the people that I talk to, once you have the equipment and it's Bare minimum, you need, a, you need a computer, you need headphones, you need a microphone. Bare minimum. And of course, your DAW, your recording software. Um, I would also recommend training. It'll just help you in the long run to get um, established faster, I would think. But there's a lot of ways to find audiobook work. And a lot of people will tell you ACX is, you know, I'm sure you hear that a lot, ACX, which is the arm of uh, Amazon where narrators and authors come together to make audiobooks for Audible. There's a lot of other distributors out there. I mean, not only major distributors that handle audiobooks alone, like Findaway, but there's also indie publishers. There are, there are uh, indie authors, and you can connect with them via social media platforms, LinkedIn, you know, finding their website and reaching out to them, doing a little research on your own. All of these, um, I don't, shouldn't say all, but a lot of the voiceover casting platforms, uh, the pay to plays, the freelance platforms, you know, gosh, uh, freelancer people per hour, Fiverr, Upwork, Voquint, um, Backstage, I believe even I've seen them on. Voices.com, Voice123. I mean, all of these platforms I have seen audiobook work on. Not only that, but, you know, other major distributors. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then once you have enough books under your belt, and I think depending on um, what some of these platforms require to be able to be included on their roster, you might need to have an agent, you might need to have won an award or have an IMDb. Um, so my point is there's a lot of places to find audiobook work. So don't think that ACX is the end all be all because there's a lot of different ways to find audiobook, but audiobook work, but it just takes a little bit of work on your part to find the platforms that have them available or to do the work in making the connections with publishers and authors to make yourself visible so they can see you, hear you, they can communicate with you, right? <clears throat> and I think we talk about these things quite a bit on my channel here. Mark Flores says, worked with some audio engineers, and now my audiobook process is super streamlined. Same. Took a few books, but I'm pretty confident about it. And that confidence is everything. Because as soon as you're confident in what you can do and your abilities and your skill level with your DAW, that confidence comes through in your read. It comes through in your performance. Because you're not, you know anxious or worried about, you know, you just kind of let go and know that whatever is happening, it will be fine once you get to the post-production process. So that's everything. 
happy for you. That's awesome. MG Steven says, I am submitting my fifth audiobook today and have a couple in the queue. Good for you, MG. One big problem is cold or allergies and best things to take to help with the old throat and best practices to shorten edit time. I have the same issues. Um, I think ever since I had COVID, gosh, what, three years ago now, just about three years ago, it's the sinuses have never been the same. So, I mean, you could do like a steam inhaler. There are uh, saline solutions. There's a lot of people swear by those neti pots, you know, maybe taking an allergy medication. Throat coat tea is everything. I don't like licorice. And there's like that slippery elm bark in there, which got sort of like a, I don't know if it's that, or maybe there is star anise in there or something. But anyway, I don't really get down with the black licorice flavor, but it does help. So throat coat tea for sure. There's, you know, uh, warm water with lemon. There's a lot of different ways to soothe. Uh, lozenges, there's like vocal lozenges. There's all sorts of things out there. Uh, best practices to shorten edit time is just in the doing. You know, the more you do it, the, the faster you will become at it. And depending on what DAW or recording software you have, if you want um, maybe to jump a few steps ahead, reach out to an audio engineer that is proficient at that DAW and that can help you to create some shortcuts, maybe, um, you know, presets, things like that to help shorten your time. Phil says, hey, Joy, have you checked Project Gutenberg's website? There's a lot of copyright free books there. Yeah, Project Gutenberg is a site where uh, there is nothing but books in the public domain. Although I have seen one that did the copyright situation was a little bit fuzzy, you know, meaning I don't I'm not quite sure why it was there if Project Gutenberg was um, is hosting a site full of books out of copyright, meaning they're, you know, public domain. So just double check that the book has is free and clear of rights, but there's uh, a ton of uh, books in the public domain on Project Gutenberg. I think it's gutenberg.org is the website. Brittany Beck says, yes, allergies are killing me right now. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people could say the same for sure, myself included. Tyler says, I've started submitting auditions but haven't landed my first one yet. And that's okay. That's normal. Some people... You know, it takes 10 auditions to get one. Some people, it takes one. <laughs> Some people, it takes 50. It just depends on, it really comes down to that serendipitous moment where you and the narrator looking for your voice converge. So to give yourself the best opportunity in having that happen, make sure you audition a lot. Audition for books a lot. You know, set yourself a goal for auditioning in a day or in a week or in a month, but just keep auditioning. Nick says, okay, I definitely needed to hear that. Six to seven hours per finished hour. I do not feel alone anymore. Uh, good. That's why we talk about this, because it does take time, especially in the beginning. But you do, as you keep going, you get faster and faster and more proficient with it. Caesar says, uh, I do have one question. Does anyone narrate standing up and away from your laptop with a clicker to mark errors? Or do most of y'all sit with the laptop and do punch and roll or edit on the fly? I'm pretty much, just to answer for myself, I'm pretty much limited to sitting in this room. It's just so jam-packed with stuff. Standing is not really an option for me in here. But um, my computer, like the body of my computer is outside this room. I don't know if you can, you could probably hear it right now because my door is open. But I have it outside the room with all the cables running under the door so I can keep it as quiet as possible here, but yet still have everything I need in this room but I sit. And I think that's pretty typical for audiobooks because they do take so much time and you really should be comfortable while you do it. But again, it comes down to preference. It comes down to if you're doing punch and roll, if you're using the clicker method, if you're standing or sitting, any which way you want to do it, I guess whatever comes down to what it comes down to is whatever is most comfortable for you. <clears throat> Laura says, thank you for the range of time necessary. That helps me be realistic in my own learning curve. For sure. Joya says, I recorded two audiobooks, but didn't publish them. Pardon me while I chapstick. Now I'm thinking of trashing them and re-recording them with my new mic to unify the sound for the whole series. <sighs> I admire you for that. That would that would be that would be tough. 
especially with you, because I know all of your books are pretty good size. That would be a lot of work to just disregard and to redo. But they're your books, ultimately. So, dang, girl. Olivia says, hi, Angela. Hi, Olivia. I just finished my first audiobook with the help of your video, so thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad they could help you. Congratulations. Where do you find books to narrate? Right now, I'm only using ACX, but I am not thrilled with the choices. Again, I hope you were here just a few minutes ago when I went through all that stuff, but making yourself visible online, <clears throat> excuse me, having a profile on all of these pay-to-plays, maybe not all of them, but choose the ones that you're most comfortable with. There's also... Um, I can't think, Eric, if you're still here, what is the website that you, uh, there was a, a like a roster of narrators. What what was that again? The narrators list or something like that? I can't think of the name, but there's uh, all kinds of different publishers, indie authors. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to make connections with people for audiobook production. You just have to go out and find them. I mean, a simple Google search, as funny as that sounds, will help at least start you down one rabbit hole and where to find uh, alternative sites to find op audiobooks. And maybe the people that are looking for narrators for their roster. But ACX is not, not the only, not the only one. Joey West says, thanks, uh, Phil. I got that site and I'm gathering children's books. Oh, Project Gutenberg. Mm-hmm. Kara says to Caesar, I'm lazy, so I sit and punch and roll and sometimes edit on the fly. Just make you lazy or comfortable. <laughs> Fyra Matrix says, how do you choose which book would be profitable? Um, I think we already answered this question, right? Not sure why it's on there again. Phil says, hey, Joya. Joya says, I'm actually waiting for that audiobook from Caesar. Can't wait to hear what he's done with it. Same Caesar, you got to keep us posted on that one. Caesar says, I personally prefer narrating standing up with room for my arms to move <laughs> for flailing, <laughs> flailing room, then edit later. I focus on the performance first, then deal with the technical bits after. And I think that is the way to go because it ultimately is going to come down to your performance and how you handle the copy and how you handle the story or the characters or the plot twist. Or, you know, I think that's really what it's going to come down to for sure. Joya says, Phil, good morning. A Simple Taylor says, hey, Angela, finishing up my third audiobook. Okay, this is, I think, the third time this question has come up. I don't know why it's reposting. Hey, Blaze, been congested all week really bad. Tried to work on my demos, but it was gross. <laughs> Feeling sounding better today on my birthday. It's your birthday? Happy birthday, Blaze. Hang on a second. Do I have a... No. I thought I had a happy birthday video, but I don't. So you've inspired me to, to make one. So I can wish everybody happy birthday when it's their birthday. Um, and then I lost my spot. Nah. <laughs> I see a lot of multiple questions. Is it just keep posting, reposting? Oh my gosh, we have a ton of comments. Okay. Um, good birthday present to myself. Absolutely. Get on those demos, man. Dylan says, I sit and edit on the fly. Same. Caesar says to Joy, I can't speak for myself because, well, it's my nature, but I can tell you I enjoy every minute of it and I want to complete the series. Phil says, thumbs up, Joy. Tycon Dalar. Tycon, Tycon Dalar. I often wonder if I could make money reading erotica, but then I would feel like a VO hooker and have shame for years. There's a lot of people who do narrate spicy stuff. And there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money in them, their hills. And you can use a pseudonym. I'll just say that. So there you go. Blaze says, wondering if I should get a different DAW. I've gotten used to Reaper, but there's some things about it that seem sort of glitchy. Should I bite the bullet and get what you use, Angela? I mean, that's up to you. I'm always going to, I'm always going to tell people that uh, Audition is awesome because I've used it for years and I love it. And I'm very familiar with it now at this point. So, but it is a subs subscription based DAW, but, um, you know, 20 bucks a month. If you're, you know, audiobook 
if you're if you're just an audiobook, you know, nut doing audiobooks all the time, or if you're being really, you know, it's going to pay for itself. I mean, 20 bucks isn't really anything if you're, you know, if you've got two or three books in a month, right? It It's worth it. But it's up to you, Blaze. Julia says, so I'm new to voiceover and I'm trying to get a laptop. What do you think is the best one for VO? And again, there's going to be a lot of variables and a lot of different answers to that question. But I think for voiceover, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Of course, you want one that's relatively quiet. And I would say probably just to help future proof yourself to make sure that it has um, connections that are going to be compatible with interfaces and such. So if it's got uh, USB, USB-C connections or outputs or inputs, so you can plug in an interface. Um, what else would you need to consider? Probably RAM. If you decide to get into video editing or adding a voiceover to video or dubbing or things like that, if you want to help kind of future proof, proof yourself, if you don't want to buy another laptop in a couple years because you've gotten into other aspects of VO that require more horsepower. So I would say, I would say at least 16 gigs of RAM. But apart from that, it doesn't really matter what you choose as long as it's got a little bit of horsepower, that it's relatively quiet, and that it's got the inputs, outputs that you need to do what you need to do with it, right? Maybe an HDMI port if you want to run a secondary monitor and move the laptop away from you outside the room, perhaps with an extra long cord so it, you don't, your mic doesn't pick up the fan noise, right? So there's all those things to consider, but it doesn't really matter which, you know, PC, Mac doesn't matter. Caesar says to Sarah, some of us started with $25 mics, but first consider your recording environment. An excellent recording environment will make an affordable mic sound very usable. That is very true. Going back to the microphone question, it doesn't really matter what you pick, whether it's USB, you know, XLR, a $20 mic versus a $5,000 mic. All of those mics are going to pick up you and the room that you're recording in. So treating your space is probably the most important aspect of this, hands down. I can't believe I have not touched on that at all. Th Caesar, so thank you for bringing that up. But your recording space, treating your space is is more important than which mic you choose. <clears throat> thank you, Caesar. Sarah says, thank you, I appreciate you. I've seen a few great reviews. Definitely an investment if I find it something I love. Uh, Sa Saqib Nawaz, I hope I said that right. I've created my profile on Fiverr and shared gigs also, but I didn't receive a single order since six months. What to do? Well, I would say if you haven't seen any traffic, then change the algorithm. Change up your title, change up your tags, change up your thumbnail, change up your pricing structure. What have you got to lose at this point? If you have no traffic, then completely revamp the gig and try something, try a different direction. Refresh it and see if that helps. Uh, Kara says, um, to Tycon, Tycon Dolores, uh, most of my sales this month are from Spicy Books. So yes, you would make money. Yeah. Again, there's money and then there are hills. Sarah says, thank you, Caesar. Caesar says to uh, Tyler, Psh, no shame in enjoying and or reading erotica. But hey, there's always working under a pseudonym. Su pseudonym. I mean, a pen name. Pneumonia. <laughs> and then an anemone. Phil says, yes, Angela, I didn't want to name those two platforms because I didn't want my comment blocked. Um, as long as you're not like putting a, like a link, like a direct link to something, it shouldn't filter it out. Kelsey V says, howdy, Angela and friends. Caesar says, whoop, tag the wrong guy. I'm at Tycon, Tycon Delore. I hope I'm saying that right. Joe Pay says, 2,852 right, words took eight hours to read. Are you missing a digit? Yes, you're missing a digit. 28, 520 words. So roughly about 2.8, almost, you know, just under three hours took eight hours. And that's, that's, I'd say that's about normal for sure. A simple tailor says, thanks for the advice, Angela. By the way, if you get the same question from me, I deleted those, but they still got loaded into the question queue. Oh, I don't know. They probably do from YouTube, but not from StreamYard, which is what I'm using to do all of this stuff. So thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, fiery, fiery, fiery matrix. Am I saying that right too? 
I got a rejection before and the author was kind enough to give me feedback. And that is rare, I find. So if you got feedback, that's awesome. And she said it was good, but she had a particular voice in her head. So I know not to take it personally. Good. Good. Caesar says, wait, hang on. Show us that mug again, Angela. The Lost Boys. But of course, it is the Lost Boys. One of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Gregory says to Aaron, I have gotten several rejections since really digging into this audiobook thing. I'm still waiting on some pendings to turn or turn and run. We hang tough in there. That's right. You do. And you keep auditioning. <laughs> Phil says, I'd like to voice cartoons too, like Dragon Ball, Batman, Superman, and cartoons like that. Yeah, I I think that would be cool too. I would totally do that for sure. Sarah says, I think that's what I really want to get into. I would love to do video games or for kids' movies. Those are fun. Uh, Blaze says, hit that like button, y'all. Hey, you got to do it now. Blaze said so. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, Bear338 says, welcome to the family and cookies are still warm. Don't eat the ones Ernesto made. <laughs> a simple Taylor says, Rode NT1 is a great startup XLR mic if you're lean and hungry VO just starting out. And I have find, I have found, uh, which one did I start out with? Oh God, I'm having a brain fart. Was it an NT1 or an NT1A? I think it was an NT1A I started out with. Either way, both mics have a pretty low self noise. So they don't, I mean, some mics will make noise on their own, but those two had a pretty low self noise. So I, that's one of the reasons why I selected an NT1A and I was happy with it, but my dream mic at the time was to have a Sennheiser 416. So once that was achieved, I, you know, I pretty much stuck with it, but it is a great mic. It's a great mic to start out with. I still have it. <laughs> Isaac says, morning all. I would love to voice a cartoon. Dream gig would be a demon lord in a fantasy anime. That would be cool. Bunky Bear USA says, I'm not nervous about my rejections. It's my first offer that scares me. Mm -hmm. the, the doing, being on the spot, right? All of that pressure to do. I get that too. I put some samples on and I got an email from some company in my Lo in London asking me questions about my pricing and other stuff. We'll answer their questions. But don't hold yourself. Don't let fear decide your fate. Don't let fear hold you back. If you're very nervous about charging somebody for your incompetence or being pressured for time when you're not quite sure if you can do it, which is where exactly I was in the very beginning, you could always go to LibriVox.org, LibriVox.org, and there you can volunteer. You can donate your time and skills in narrating a chapter of a book, a section of a book. There's poetry books. You could do a couple lines of poetry. You could read a book in its entirety. These are all books in the public domain. And in that process, you learn that you can narrate long form, that you can edit, that you can master and post produce it and to meet audiobook standards. And in that process of learning all of that stuff and learning that you can do that stuff, the confidence that comes with that was everything for me to feel comfortable asking for money in return for my, you know, for my services. So that is something to consider that might help with the confidence and moving forward. Lamar is here. Hey, Lamar. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a while, bro. So much work in audiobooks. Yes, they are a lot of work. Caesar, while I do agree and sympathize that audiobook narration has a lot of technical work, I feel like the fun part in the is in the performance, although I can see how that may not be other people's jam either. And I think I, I'm really surprised you said that because you're you're very uh, techy. You're kind of on the techy side. You enjoy editing and stuff. So I'm surprised to hear you say that the performance is your favorite part. Although you're very good at it, so I can see how that would just kind of be your jam. Chrissy Sell says, "Nice, Eric." Mm -hmm. Dylan says, "Cartoons are my ultimate goal. I love animation, and hearing my voice coming from a character would be amazing." 
it's weird from my own my own perspective. It's weird, but it's so cool. It is so cool. Joe says, uh, 28, 952 words in my book, eight hours to read it. And that's a, that's about normal to start, you know, in the beginning. Phantom Voice says, I'm 36, have six kids and one on the way, plus a wonderful wife. Oh, and a crap job. Where do you find the time? Wow. Okay. So I was in a similar position, uh, minus six kids, you know, uh, five and a half kids. <laughs> But I found my time after the kiddo went to bed. I would spend a couple nights in here doing what I needed to do at night while everybody was asleep. On the weekends, sacrificing a little bit of time away. You sort of just fit it in where you can in the beginning until you can sort of figure out your schedule where maybe you can um, have an agreement with your significant other to allow you a certain block of time every day or every, you know, whatever day that may be to explore this endeavor and make sure that it's something that you want to do and that you can make time for, right? It can be done. You might have to be sacrificing a little bit of sleep. You might be sacrificing a little bit of time away, but know that your why and your ultimate goal for doing this is going to m keep you moving forward. And that end goal of being a full-time narrator makes you available all the time, well, most of the time to your family once you've achieved that, right? So, knowing that this would be a temporary solution or a temporary sacrifice and that your end goal is to do this full time, I would imagine, would give you more time with everyone as an end result. Right. That's kind of how it went for me. Phil says to Dylan Holt, I second that. Caesar says, Phantom Voice, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, oh, my God. <laughs> that's it's a handful. I am Paximus says, I'm hoping to upload new vids to my TikTok and YouTube this weekend. Thank you so much for support, Angela and stuff. <laughs> oh, by the way, this Java break is brought to you by me, Java break. Yes. Okay. So I am Paximus. Go check out his TikTok. Cheers. Oh, hold on. We have a super chat. We've got a super chat. Hold on. We've got, oh my God, we got a couple super chats. Oh my goodness, how am I going to get through all these comments in the next three minutes? It's not happening. Dark Lens, coffee on me. Thank you for all you do. Well, thank you, Dark Lens. I appreciate you. I'm in here sweating. Why is it so hot in here? Because I live in the desert. That is why. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold, please. I'm sweating. <laughs> Oof, huh? Thank you very much, Dark Lens. I appreciate you. Um, and then Paximus. Thank you, Paximus. I appreciate you. Enjoy your cup of Java. I appreciate all you do to help us. I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Um. Oh my gosh, how are we going to get through? I have another meeting in like an hour, so we need to get through these comments. Um, oh my gosh, where did we leave off? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Um, okay, I found it. Okay, so we're here. Nick Davis. Uh, to Caesar, I'm sitting at my little desk in the closet. I envision making my space or future space being more comfortable for standing. I'm working with that. I have now until this venture can earn. And just keep with it. It will happen as long as you just keep with it. Don't give up. Bear338 says, this is acting, performing. I am just starting to discover how huge this industry is. And it is. It is huge. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. I mean, I came into this again for just the audiobooks, but then once I really sat down, it was like a light bulb moment. It was like, oh my God, everything that I hear online, on TV, on radio, I mean, even some podcasts and YouTube channels, I mean, anywhere that you hear a voice, there's a voice actor for the most part, or an audiobook narrator, or both, right? It's huge. IMDB is the, um, what does IMDB stand for? Oh my gosh. 
it's where it's a website where you can go and see um, look at information about books, not books, movies that have been uh, made, mo movies that are in production, um, actors. You can find for more information about actors, things that they have done or appeared in. Go check it out. IMDB.com. Phil says, one of my concerns is that even if you're good, you still won't get gigs because you're not famous enough or don't have a lot of followers and things like that. Well, Phil, I'm just going to squish that altogether because I, I have, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm the best narrator in the world because I'm not, I'm just one of, but I have done fairly well, I think over the past few years, I've I'm probably pretty close to 130, 140 books under my belt at this point. And the only people who know who I am are you guys. <laughs> I'm not famous. I'm not, I don't have a bajillion followers, but I've done okay. I've done pretty well with making the connections with the authors and things and um, getting the gigs that I have. But you do just inherently get better as you go along. So just keep refreshing your demos and making sure that you're showing your best stuff all the time. And just don't lose faith. Just keep going at it because you love it, right? Bunky Bear USA says, where do you find those audiobook engineers? Fiverr? Oh, uh, Facebook groups. If you're in my Facebook group, we have Uncle Roy is in my Facebook group. I have, um, I've worked with Tim Tippetts. You can find him. He is the... VO Guru Tech or VO Tech Guru. Oh gosh, which one is it? VO Tech Guru, I think. And there's also Lenny B. I mean, there's a handful in our, in our industry. Just join some Facebook groups for VO and they'll either be in the group, like we have Uncle Roy in mine, or you can hear some names passed around in, in conversations, or you could just ask in your Facebook group if you're in a voiceover Facebook group. Hey, does anybody have a great audio engineer that I can talk to? And then you'll get probably lots of recommendations. Dylan Holt says to Phantom Voice, same age, but I have two kids and a wife. I sacrifice sleep. My family goes to bed around nine to 10 and record from then until about one. Then I get up at six to do the, take the kids around for school. See, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty common. That's usually what I hear is after the kiddos go to bed, then I work for a few hours. I might have to sacrifice some sleep, but just know that this is temporary. This isn't forever, right? Once you reach that goal of full time. Uh, Caesar says to Nick Davis, good call. I unfortunately couldn't do, do a booth. I'm claustrophobic. So I built a studio, but went about it in the wrong order. Did a lot of trial and error, currently doing soundproofing. And that's usually how it goes, is trial and error, right? But that's why we, another reason why we have these community chats. So maybe something you hear, you pick up on it and go, oh, I didn't even think about that. That is a great idea, right? That's why we do this, to help each other maybe learn what we don't know. Hot tatty? What is a hot tatty? Joy West says, hi, Angela. This rabbit got as far as signing up on ACX, but I just heard I need to go through ACX. No, you don't. That's what threw me off. You don't. Mm -mm. It's there to help you answer some questions along the way, but you don't have to go through it. I'm at the part where I'm trying to get the portfolio together. All you need is some samples. Just record some little snippets of you reading books off your shelf to start until you have some titles under your belt, then you can use those. But don't let any of that stuff hold you back. Just keep going, Joy. Caesar says to Pat, you mean IMDB, Internet Movie Database. Thank you. Thank you, Caesar. I knew you would know. It's an online database for movies and TV shows, including cast, production, trivia, and other stuff. Thank you. So much well stated than I did. <laughs> than I did a little bit ago. Joya says, I love audio editing. I can fine tune things and distinguish character voices with EQing and a touch of synth applications. I'm down to a one to one in basic editing and a one to two in my sound design edits. I'm so jealous. That would be so cool to learn to do. I am Paximus. Angela seriously died laughing when you said, and that confidence is everything. Whispers, ha, it was awesome. <laughs> Pat Heron says, thanks, Caesar. Bear338, I am on Gutenberg and use it to practice Beowulf with help uh, with names. <laughs> yeah, especially in Beowulf. Uh, Caesar says, happy to help. Pat Joya says, practice makes perfect is the best way to ma master editing. Um, what is the other practice makes? It's not perfect. It's practice makes. 
ah, what is the other saying? That's not perfect. Practice makes, I forget what it is. Phil says to Caesar, I personally open a new track under the current track to tell me I made a mistake. <laughs> Mick Davis says to Joya, nice. I want to be you. That is so cool. What helped you to get there besides the obvious practice and repetition? Joya did a, a, took a lot of training. She has a lot of expensive software. She took a lot of training to get to where she's at. Fiber Jazz says to Caesar, that's a good idea. Leslie says, producing editing is a beast. Props to Caesar for his comment in Discord about how the editing process is a creative endeavor. Help change my mindset. Look at Caesar changing lives. <laughs> yes, Leslie. Phantom Voice says, thanks, Caesar and Dylan. Caesar says uh, to Leslie, I'm glad that helped. I've worked in so many creative fields for so many years. I realize it can be daunting to shape whole cloth into your vision, but the end result is always fulfilling. It is. It is. Gregory says to Caesar, I come from old school radio where we sat down in front of a reel to reel and edited with a wax pencil, razor blade and splicing tape. That, yeah. When did that stop? The 80s, 90s is still my method in the digital realm. Uh, Caesar says, oh, hey, happy birthday, Mechadi, Mechadi, <laughs> Blaze. I was going to give you a cake, but I ate it. Happy birthday, Blaze. Glowin says, good afternoon, voice over Angela and chat. Sorry I'm late to the party. I hope you brought donuts. Hope you're all having a good one and have lots of hot coffee. It's tepid and it's without donuts. So if you're late to the party, you got to bring donuts. That's how it works. Joya says to Nick, I practiced and I learned sound design to give me permission to play with my EQ and sound characteristics. Once you feel free, once you feel free to mess up the sound, you learn freedom in editing. I love that. MG Steven says, thank you, Angela, for all your great tips and help for us all. I've got to run now, so I have to catch the rest later. Bye, everybody. Bye, MG. We'll see you on the replay. Yes, Joyous is happy birthday, Blaze. Yes, Glowin, happy birthday, Blaze. Get better soon. Joyous says, hey, Blaze, hit me up. I'll show you the shortcuts and ins and outs of Reaper. There you go. You ask and you shall receive, my friend. Ronnie says, hi, I'm just getting started in the voiceover game. I have a simple lav mic. Can I get started with it? I wouldn't recommend a lavalier mic to get started with. I would, I, no. <laughs> not because there's anything wrong with it but in my head I foresee lots of brushing if it's attached to something and you're moving around there's going to be a lot of noise and just stuff that shouldn't be there it's going to be difficult to remove and post and you might get a clearer sound with an actual external mic um, other than a lavalier mic one that attaches to your clothes Mindframe says, hi there, really new to this, like four days, I have bought a bunch of equipment and it all in the mail. Do you have a list of presets and plugins you recommend? I have a ton of videos here on my channel that go through all of these things. Or you can join Facebook groups and find a lot of information. There's just so much to go through and so many variables, I wouldn't be able to do that in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> So, but I'm glad to have you here and welcome to the family. Enjoy the ride. Caesar says to Gregory, oh, wow, that must have been fun. I think I would have had fun, but I started my journey digital. Built my own PC to do it too. That was in the early 90s. I'm a certified geek. Welcome to the club. Uh, Chrissy says, happy birthday, Blaze. Joy says, hi, Angela. Where is the best place to find VO medical commercial work for TV and radio? Um, I, I, pay to plays, freelance marketplaces, uh, making connections with companies who um, specialize in making this kind of content. Think outside the box, right? Where would you go? If, I mean, they're, they're I guess what I'm saying is they're people too. They have social media platforms. They have company uh, profiles. They have all of these things. Just go out there and find them and reach out to them market them with email or cold calls or, you know, all the pay to plays, all the freelance platforms. I mean, anywhere you look, you'll probably find it. Um, <laughs> Blaze says Caesar, LOL. Sarah says, got to run. Thank you. You're well, I'm glad you're here. Don't run with scissors. 
Bear338 says, Angela, I miss Fry's electronics. It was so easy to build, upgrade a PC to fit exactly what you need. I think, I think we might have like one or two left here open in Arizona, but yeah, for sure. Or Radio Shack. <laughs> Ronnie says, hi, I'm just getting started in the voiceover game. I have a simple lav mic. Can I get started with it? I think that one was a duplicate. Uh, Sarah says, I really appreciate the input. I tend to hyper focus. We've all we've all been there. Don't let yourself do that. So I just confused myself for weeks. Easy to do. Easy to go down rabbit holes and get stuck in the procrasta learning stage. Caesar says to Julia, I can already tell that you need at least an eighth generation Intel i7 or AMD Ryzen. Uh, 16 gig big, 16 gigs of RAM, a minimum, and no need for fancy graphics unless you game on the side. Although I recommend fancy graphics cards because I do a lot of video and it does help with the video and with you know exporting everything down together. So take into uh, into consideration what you would like to do or what you could possibly even maybe even fathom you know doing in the future and maybe even future proof, proof yourself a little bit but um but that could be in the future that could be a couple laptops away <laughs> lowen says to julia as a super computer geek as per voice over angela's advice get something that will prevent you from upgrading repeatedly a last year's gaming laptop is a fantastic way to go in there you go perfect Joya says, romance and erotica sells more than $10 billion a year. The next generation is horror thriller at $100 million. Can you see where I'm going with this? <clears throat> I'm with you. Caesar says, in terms of specs, I feel I need something stronger in the future as I enjoy multi-track editing and using live performance plugins. But that's just me. I'm super into production and engineering and mic collecting. Julia says to Caesar, thanks very much. That helps me out a lot. Caesar says to Julia, no worries. I'm also into tech as a hobby, so I have all these specs and numbers tucked away in the geek box in my mind palace. Dark Len says your lives are the best. Thank you very much. Randy says, same. Julia says, Glauen, thank you. Randy says, fear is actively holding me back right now. Ah, well, punch it in the face and get it to let go. Punch it right in the face. Eric says, thank you, Chrissy. Dark Len says, so much good information. You're one of the best. Oh, thank you. Joy says, speaking of cartoons and anime, what are the names of some publications where we can find out about VA casting calls? Joy, um, backstage, um, is it cast, castingcall.com? All of the, all of, oh my gosh, that is something we're probably going to have to go over in, um, in our group, I think. Because I couldn't, is it casting call, casting club? There's there's a lot of them, a lot of them. And a lot of you can find on the pay to plays, the freelance everywhere that I had named before. Um, Jordan says, what tool do you find you use most in the editing of your audiobooks? Normalization, sound reduction. I use a combination of things. Um, Sound reduction, I think I would have to say, is a little bit heavier than normal VO just because there are, are noise floor parameters that you need to meet for making audiobooks. You need to be within a certain threshold for your noise floor. So noise reduction is certainly a factor that is used, I think, uh, more than any other. But, um, but again, only use the effects that you need. Not everybody needs every effect. Only use what you need and use it sparingly because the more effects you pile onto your audio file is just going to do nothing but destroy the sound of your audio quality in the process. So again, if you have concerns about how you sound, then join a Facebook group. Again, mine, the VO workshop. I allow that. Have a post a demo, a demo, a demo for feedback. So maybe they hear something that you don't because you get accustomed to the sound of your own voice in your own space after you hear it for so long. You may not hear that there's an echo. You may not hear that there's audible background noise you may not you know or a static or something so uh food for thought caesar says to randy moore fear held me back too more than once i actually had serious ptsd episode last week post submission and it took a lot of willpower to keep it from breaking me in the end continued i realized that my fears were unfounded and that it was in fact not just competent 
not just capable, but actually talented and deserving of accolades and praise. Well stated, Caesar. A simple tailor says, speaking of characters, I got to voice Batman for a couple of minor productions. That's cool. Doing Batman's growly voice for two hours took a toll on my vocal cords. Yes, it certainly would. That's cool, though. Ray Too Real says, doing cartoon voices is one of the best voice jokes. <laughs> I'm trying to read fast because I have a meeting I need to get to. Uh, doing cartoon voices is one of the best voiceover jobs. Uh, yeah, I love it. I've done, I haven't done a ton, but I've done a handful and they are fun. Uh, Tycon Delore says, if you have a full-time job, would it be better to audition for commercials until I get really proficient at editing due to the time it takes to record audiobooks? Um, you could, however, I was able to do everything while also being employed full-time. So I guess it just comes down to how much time you have available to do some of these things while you're still employed for someone else. So if you have the ability to do all voiceover, whether it be commercial, video games, audiobooks, great. If you're very limited in time, then it might be, um, it might behoove you to just to stick with the shorter form stuff until you have the time to, to commit to audiobooks because they are a lot of work and take a lot of time. Phantom Voice says, Ray to Real, how do you get into cartoons? Randy says, we need an IMDb for books. Um, you can. I mean, mo a lot of voice actors do have an IMDb page. Um, in yeah, Internet Movie Database. Yeah, we're talking about IMDb. I know. I couldn't. It was just. That's what happens when you get old. You have a word and then it just swims away and it goes, bye. <laughs> I can't remember stuff sometimes. Ray to Real says Phantom Voice uh, Voices.com and Work Workana Plus also backstage. Um, Phantom Voice Ray to Real thanks. Caesar says Lenny B is great. I learned from him. I do my own engineering. I'm nowhere near perfect, but I enjoy the experimentation. Feyre Matrix says Would IMDb for books be Goodreads? At Goodreads is another very good place for uh, book information for sure. Um, Pempers says, hi, I just got my first audiobook gig. It's not much, about 8,000 words. Just wondering if, if royalty on ACX is mostly worth it. Again, it depends on the books, um, and the author's fan base, how well the book is selling, if it's got good reviews, all of those things would definitely be a factor before considering an, a royalty share book. If it's something that you would listen to or read, right? If it's something that may be evergreen, that would be, um, um, would be palatable to lots of walks of people for a, you know, a long amount of time. If it's not something that's sort of, you know, trending now, but something that could be evergreen would be something I would look for. Ray to real says I'm able to do multiple cartoon voices along with really deep at point of being scary to some people. Well, you would need to be a villain then you need to be a villain if you are on Fiverr and you don't mind using Fiverr, if right, especially right now, right before the, the holiday season, have a villain, scary voice, haunted house sort of gig for your voice. All those voices for those haunted houses and escape rooms and things, all they all look for voice actors too. Aaron says to Greg, um, Gregory, lost signal, last hundred miles. Thank you for the comment. Yes, I expect lots of rejection till I figure out my game. I'm thinking of donating time to a nonprofit to gain experience. Yeah, LibriVox.org is a good is a good one. Randy Moore says proficient. Did I goof saying proficient? Caesar says practice makes oh proficient. Uh, practice makes proficient. Practice makes a tender chicken. <laughs> Piper Chess says practice makes permanent. I think that's what I was looking for. So if you practice incorrectly, you are ingraining bad habits and good reason to have a coach. I think that's what I was looking for. Practice makes permanent. Joy West says, happy birthday, Blaze. Hot Pink Bear says, is Reaper better than Audacity? I keep hearing more people talking about it. I, It's hard to say because there's a lot of people who love their DAW. Audacity is free and it's come a long way in the last few years and it has a lot of effects and a lot of different capabilities that it didn't have before. But I think Reaper and Aud uh, Adobe Audition are more voiceover friendly. I just do. So, but I wouldn't say that one is necessarily better than the than the other. It's really what you are more more comfortable with because it's 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 software that you're going to be using every day 
all day, you know, once you get into this. So you have to be comfortable with it and understand it. Uh, Caesar says, I believe laugh mics are omnidirectional. You'll find that it'll capture both your room and your voice. This will be problematic. Another point for lavalier mics to not be used. Best to pick up a nice large diaphragm condenser, says the mic guy. Glowen says to Hot Pink Bear, I've heard the same. I'm going to consider it as an upgrade in the future. I've been using Director Suite 365, which is a whole host of AV editing. Just went to free Audacity. Caesar says to Bear 338, Micro Center, not near you. Those guys are awesome, and you can build your system in store. What is Micro Center? A build like a computer? Joy says to Hot Pink Bear, yes, think of it like Audacity is middle school and Reaper is college. <laughs> Hot Pink Bear says, I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Casting Call Club. That's what I was... It was a little bit of both. I was just mixing it up a little bit. Casting Call Club is what I was thinking of. Yes. Uh, Joya says to Hot Pink Bear, find Booth Junkie. He's got the best Reaper setup. If you run into issues, find me. I'm always lurking in the background and I'll help where I can. And she does. She's outstanding. <clears throat> um, Fyra, is it Fyra or Feyra? Feyra. I have lot. I have found a lot of VA casting calls on Twitter. There you go. Look around and you shall see them. Cadence says, so glad I made it. I have a huge problem with fear and perfectionism holding me back. Yep. Don't let fear or what you call perfection hold you back. Because there's no such thing as perfect. And fear, punch him in the face. Don't let fear determine your fate. You determine your fate, not fear. Jordan says, thank you. I'm excited to join the Facebook group. Do it. Caesar said, isn't Goodreads kind of like an IMDb for books? Yeah, I guess it kind of is. I am Paxma says Goodreads is kind of like that. Love Goodreads. Joy West says, practice makes perfect. I have a story, says, first live and wanted to say thanks. Just starting out and I'm trying to put different techniques to use. Learning curve. Absolutely. Just keep with it. Keep with it. I'm glad you're here. I need to get through these last few comments because I really do need to go. J. Trey Wilbank says, on just the mechanics of recording, how extreme should different voices be in an audiobook? Also, do you record the different voices all in one take? Um, I would say it all comes down to what the author wants, ultimately. Um, I would say if you want a good study on the subtlety of character voices, Scott Brick is one of my favorite narrators for character voices because he doesn't really change his voice a whole lot. Sometimes it's cadence, sometimes it's tone, sometimes it's attitude, sometimes it's a lisp, sometimes it's an accent, but it's still his voice. He doesn't really change it that much, right, to differentiate characters. And you can do it all in one take if you want. Just keep track of whose voice is whose, right? Um, I might not be able to get through all these comments, guys. I have to go. Caesar says, uh, Micro Center is like the new fries. It's geek heaven. Rows upon rows of hardware. And a place where you can build after you pick out your parts. Caesar says, use fear and perfectionism. Push you forward, not hold you back. There you go. Oh, I love this, Gregory. Fear. False evidence appearing real. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm just, I have to skim through these, guys. I have to go. Um, Miss World Traveler says, someone mentioned Twitter. Are auditions on TikTok? Yes, there are casting directors and auditions on TikTok. I'm telling you, they're there if you look for them, right? Uh, Eric says, thanks for the hopefulness and encouragement from this group. Absolutely, that's what we're here for. Caesar says, I do all voices in one take, but it's not for everyone. I have the natural ability to switch between personas and as the narrator, but it requires some preparation. Yes, you can mark up your script. Like if you have a, a script in PDF, you can highlight different characters so you know when the changes are coming and then have snippets of each character's voice available so you can remind yourself what they sound like, right? I have tons of videos here on my channel that go over a lot of this stuff. Caesar says, all right, let's I'm, my brain is trying to keep up here. All right, let's let Angela go. Have a great weekend. And then Cadence, last one. Thanks so much for hosting this space with us. Have a great week, everybody. Yes, absolutely. I'm so sorry, but I do. I hate I hate just skipping over comments, but I have to go. I have a meeting I need to get to. But thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, I will be here again next week, same time, same ch same channel. <laughs> I'll see you then. 
Bye.